Good afternoon. To uh, brand or not to brand, that is the question. And of course, it's an important one because all the discussions uh, so far have been about uh, the contents of things and uh, what it will take to change our world. And changes are necessary uh, because the world is changing. And all of the speakers have presented different perspectives of the changes uh, that we are going through. Globalization, new political shifts, financial power shifts, and uh, religious wars and terrorism, which unfortunately still are on everywhere. Environmental destruction and uh, echoing green issues, new sourcing around the world. Migrations, urbanization, both teams that have been talked about already. And of course, this means new market challenges. And that requires also new brand strategies as we focus on branding. Uh, and the world is changing in many ways. Uh, we're moving from the old world, from uh, control to explanation and uh, coordination, from authority to freedom from command to negotiation, from assumptions to individual uh, decisions, from limited choices not very long ago to mass consumption, and of course also from no brands to brand power. How many of you can uh, write a list of brands coming out of China, or even make a list of 10 Chinese companies? Probably very few. The old world was a top-down world. Religion, monarchy, government, big business. This has also changed dramatically in the last 20 years or so. And it's a, a world that's moving from the bottom up. This has helped us a lot when it comes to issues, important issues, uh, that we have to deal with and how we need to change the world today. Consumer power, issue groups, idols, and even spirituality is essential. So, part of the world, the Far East in particular, of course, is in another huge change where they're moving from needs to wants. And some of this is good, but some of it is not good. And that is, of course, also related to brands. So I'm going to try in a short span here just to look at why, uh, what, how, where, and when are brands necessary. The first question, perhaps, is uh, why is a why is brand important? And there are many good reasons, but there's some very basic ones. The first one is premium pricing. If your brand is well known, you can charge more for it. Secondly, you create customer loyalty. And of course, that leads to repeat purchase. And let us not forget that branding is about making money. And making money is also an important ingredient in shifting uh, the world around, all the areas around Plantagon's efforts and many others related require money. And it is also about creating money. And finally, of course, brand value means share value. Large corporations depend on it today. And the brand is becoming the only, the only really uh, sustainable competitive advantage for manufacturers today. The retailers have taken over. Another factor is that customers make their decisions still primarily when they stand in front of their products, a very, very large portion of them. So starting with the obvious, uh, you cannot have a brand without a brand name. And um, we've also changed the way we describe things. So not very long ago, when we, we talked about textiles, that is now high-tech fibers. 
for shipbuilding is now transport. Chemicals are described as life sciences, and banking rotates between financial services and banking. They're not always sure what they're doing these days, as many of us know. Manufacturing is into robotics, and telephones is now IT. Shopkeepers have become retailers, and uh, peasants are industrial farms, big scale. Biochemical produce is shifting towards the organic. So, is this a brand? Well, it is actually. And it's a, uh, an extract, health extract, that is very good for you, that is sold in China, among other places. The only reason it can be called Brands is that uh, the founder of this company was called John Brands. And he was Queen Victoria's physician and he developed certain extracts which she drank. So, uh, if you want to create a brand, you can't call it brands anymore, you have to be a little more inventive. Uh, this is the biggest brand in the world, the most famous brand in any country by any measure. And uh, localization is a very important factor in branding. You wouldn't think that Coca-Cola would need to have a Chinese brand name with their power and presence, but they decided that they should have one. So the can you see on the, on the left here is the Chinese version. And when you translate names, uh, brand names into China, it's very important that it's not only a phonetic translation, because the phonetic translation of this, if you can read Chinese, sounds something like ku ku ku. It's pretty close. But the really important thing is that it has a meaning. It means bringing pleasure to your mouth. So if you're going in that direction, you have to remember that all Chinese words have a meaning. And China is catching up faster than you think. You can no longer stay out, you have to engage. For some of you who don't know much about China, just a, a quick sketch of it. It's a very varied population. There are 16 languages in China and uh, 56 ethnic groups. They all sing the same song and they have the same symbol, and Mandarin is the language that connects all these ethnic groups. More importantly, the 16 languages that represent different regions where they cannot speak to each other, they can write to each other. It's the same written language for all different groups. A few statistics. You know that it's over 1.3 billion. There are more men than women. And uh, the magic 2050 that's been thrown around already, by that time, the majority in China will be over 50. The birth rate is slow. The average age is 32. And longevity is 74. And uh, it is also estimated that within 20 years, 350 million will move into the big cities. We heard some of these statistics earlier this year, that China is one place where it's happening in big speed. So, I just wanted you to have a picture of the size of China, which you probably know about to some extent, and relate that to uh, when brands, when we were talking about choices, Price and quality are fundamental ingredients for all uh, discussions about brands. So, brand can be a concept. It can also be a service. Or it can be a product, of course. Another consideration is the country. Is it made in Sweden? Is it made in China? What are the implications of these references? They're very important today, and I think uh, we should look at them. Another way of more fine-tuning 
Branding is to look at their positioning. It could be based on value. You know, value-add products can charge a premium price. But the other uh, two big uh, issues that are developing all the time, of course, is organic and well-positioned products. In uh, nearly all Western markets, the sale of organic products is, is constantly rising. And consumers are prepared to pay more for it. And this is consumer segmented uh, targeting. But of course, the brand can only grow as long as it stays relevant uh, to the consumer and true to itself. So let's think about made in. You know, made in somewhere. Made by. Or made by a big company. Or made here. I made it up. What values does this uh, give to a brand? Think about countries for a little bit. And um, if I say to you, made in England, and you were to sort of write down something you think of as made in England, it wasn't very long ago that lots of things were made in England. These days they don't make very much. But perhaps you would think of the Beatles, or maybe you would think of Rolls Royce, or or Virgin Airlines. If I say made in Germany, what does that bring to mind? Well, cars, Mercedes, Audi, Forsprung, durch Technik. Uh, made in France, well, fashion, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, Dior. We're talking about power of brand names here. Perhaps that's what you would think of then. How about Italy? Well, Ferrari, Alessi, Cassina, Armani. Italy is interesting because they actually have a spread that goes from object to fashion to furniture and architecture. Well, we're in Sweden, so we'll have to think about that. Uh, Volvo, Ericsson, Ikea, Half of Volvo now, of course, is a Chinese company. That didn't happen very long ago. Made in Japan, what would you think of then? Sony, Canon, Toshiba, Lexus. How about the US? Apple, Nike, Microsoft. And what about made in China? Everything is made in China. You can't go anywhere now without buying something, looking at it's made in China. But since we're talking also about produce, we're talking about agriculture, we're talking about what we eat, I thought it would be interesting also to ask the question in relation to food. So if I say made in England, what do you think about that? Do you think about roast beef? Perhaps. How about Germany? Sausages, sauerkraut. Or France? Foie gras? Italy, spaghetti and pizza, probably without any doubt. And how about Sweden? Swedes would say meatballs. But other countries would say we also make meatballs, so I'm not sure that's a proper one. Made in Japan? Well, Sushi, I guess. And sake. And uh, how about the US? Hamburgers, can't go wrong there. And China? Well, green tea, but many other things as well. China's uh, culinary uh, offer is just enormous. I show sometimes a page on what a chef needs to know if he has a normal kitchen and a, a list which covers 40 pages. So another thing we need to know when we develop brands is, uh, is to talk about brand hierarchies. And uh, what do we mean by that? Well, of course, today we have too many products in the market, far too many. And we don't need 50 different toothpaste brands, for example, but that's the way it is. 
So we've done an exercise uh, not very long ago, which is related to Chongming Island in China, which my colleague Professor Liu will tell you a bit more about. But one of the exercises we did there was to try and develop a brand for a local community and to segment it. So we called the, the mother brand Chongming Agriculture, after the island, and basically the sub-brands were of three kinds, fresh food, organic food, and herbal health food. So this is a pretty classic way of uh, developing a brand structure for any company. If you want to take it a little bit further, and you look at uh, a more sophisticated segmentation, you can start by saying, let's develop a parent company, and that would be called Chongming Island. And the Chongming Island would then have a product or family, which would be Chongming Agriculture. It can be other things as well. And the product line would be Chongming Vegetables. And the product would be Organic Vegetables. And the product itself would be Chongming Whole Wheat Tomato, for example. So this is a classic uh, way of segmenting products and to give them a presence in the market. And if you don't segment the market, the market will segment you. This was said by a famous Harvard professor many years ago. So where, where are we headed now uh, with all of this? Well, I call this the obesity threat. 40% uh, of the US population are now considered obese. These are absolutely frightening statistics. Why? One of the reasons is that they are consuming these brands on a daily rate. Uh, this has also now entered China. There are 2,000 McDonald's in China, and uh, at least 2,000 Kentucky Fried Chickens. This is an area where you have to question whether brand power is the right way to move the world forward in the right direction. Of course, the other direction we're moving is uh, an organic experience, and that's a brand. And, uh, there are many ways now in which this is being described. Uh, made from earth, um, organic, good for nature, EcoCert is just a couple of them. The other thing which is equally important is the area which touches on safety of food, which is authenticity and credibility. And almost every country now has some form of stamp of approval. And this is just a small collection. Some have developed a whole range of them. So any shopper now who goes into the area of organic fruit wants to have some kind of assurance that he's getting the right thing, uh, can refer to some of these Wholesome Food Association or USDA organic big stamp in the US, for example. Or crop here in Sweden. Uh, and with this comes the creation of brand names. So here is one uh, where example where you have to be careful when you create a brand name, you have to protect it. So this is one called Organics that already exists in half a dozen forms. One is for pet food, another one is for finger food, another one is Organics Beauty. So part of the game of creating brand names is that you have to actually make sure you have it protected. Perhaps more gener generic ones like Organica will evolve, or you have Whole Foods Market that cover a whole section, or just uh, a symbol which would give you an idea that it could be organic. And the extension is already full on the way, so you have organic textiles now. Have uh, skin care organic, mm -hmm. biological agriculture, eco labels, 
Organic Standard Association. There is even already a brand name on vertical farming that I found on the internet the other day when I was cruising around. So the strength and uh, perception of a brand, of course, is much more than just a logo type and a symbol. It takes a long time to develop a brand. And uh, the first thing, of course, is everything that is its description, the verbal side, including the brand name and the language and the description around it. Oops, went a bit too fast there, sorry. So we then have the visual side as well, what you see. And you have the personality of a brand, it takes a long time to develop. Is it a product or service, or both? And the environment, the retail outlets, in some cases, are the most important part, and that's where we talk about brand architecture. So if we take produce from a country, uh, or from a small island like Chongming, and bring it to Shanghai, let's say, we also have to think about the retail outlet and what that can add to it in terms of credibility. So, I have a little checklist uh, which I refer to when we talk about creating brands. The first thing is, of course, select the right product and decide what niche you want to be in. What is the point of origin? Is it made in? What about the authenticity? How do you make sure that it's believable and uh, the credibility of a product? What authorities and approvals do you need? In some areas, of course, like pharmaceutical products or let's say medicine, herbal medicines, the procedure to get approval is very complex and it is, of course, important. Needless to say, you need a brand name and you need legal protection for it. Packaging and label are crucial. And distribution. Finally, and least but not last, communication. You have to tell a story. You have to communicate it. Just like our wonderful moderator said earlier, communication is essential. But you've got to get the content right to do that. So I have what I call my eight steps to develop successful brands. And uh, this is uh, based on my experience, of course, in China. Uh, some of you might know that eight is a lucky number. So it's always very good if you can limit something to eight. The first one, of course, is to develop, select and develop sustainable products. Secondly, create a timeless brand name and make sure you have it protected. Define and uh, offer value-added products. Consumers demand it from the bottom up. Now, you can't hide things anymore. On social networks, on Twitter, on Facebook. If you got it wrong, you can be killed pretty quickly these days. You have to have, of course, clear brand strategies, where you want to be, how you want to distribute. What are your channels? Which are the most effective ones? What do you need to do? And you have to have a communication platform. You have to tell good stories. And you have to select the appropriate media channels for that. And you have to think and plan long term. It takes a long time to develop a product and a brand. And it's very quick to kill it off. So, here we are. Here is a powerful universal brand being developed now, Plankano. And CMU City connected with it. Perhaps they should be a tandem at all cases. And to use Oren's very inspiring speech the other day, I thought this is a very good slogan for the common. For well, the common good means also added values. So in this 
Third, we, we have to think, think about something bigger when we do it. We have to think about something sustainable, longevity. And we have to have emotional benefits. So that is, of course, supporting rural life in this case. And there are functional benefits as well, a healthier lifestyle. We need to certainly live a healthier life. And the attributes would be fresh, could be fresh local products. Thank you very much.